Mr. President, Indonesia would like to exercise our right of reply to the statements delivered by Solomon Islands and Vanuatu, echoed by Nauru, Marshall Islands, Tuvalu, and Tonga regarding matters concerning Papua, a province of Indonesia. Indonesia is shocked to hear that at this important stage, where leaders gather in this August body to address the early implementation of SDGs, the transformation of our collective actions, and other global challenges such as climate change, of which the Pacific countries are affected the most. The state leaders chose instead to violate the UN Charter by interfering in other countries' sovereignty and violating its territorial integrity. We categorically reject the continuing insinuations in their statements. They clearly reflect an unfortunate lack of understanding of the history, current situation, and progressive developments in Indonesia, including in the provinces of Papua and West Papua, and also an unfriendly and rhetoric political maneuver. Their politically motivated statements were designed to support separatist groups in the state provinces who have consistently engaged in inciting public disorder and in conducting armed terrorist attacks upon civilians and security personnel. Evidently, the statement made by those countries clearly violates the purposes and objectives of the UN Charter and the principle of international law on friendly relations among states, as well as the sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. I repeat, it is a violation of sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. It is highly regrettable and dangerous for states to misuse the United Nations, including this August Assembly. These countries are using the General Assembly to advance their domestic agenda and for some countries to divert attention from political and social problems at home. The state countries are also using false and fabricated information as the basis of their statement. The conducts of these countries undermine the UN Charter and are detrimental to the credibility of this assembly. Mr. President, Indonesia's commitment to protection of human rights is unquestionable. Indonesia is a founding member of the Human Rights Council. Indonesia has sat as a member of the Council for three previous periods and is currently a member of the Council for the fourth time. Indonesia is the initiator of the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights and OIC Independent Permanent Commission of Human Rights. Indonesia has ratified eight out of nine core international human rights instruments, all incorporated into our national legal system, in compared four by Solomon Islands and five by Vanuatu. Indonesia is among few countries who have a continued national action plan on human rights and currently is on its fourth generation of the plan from 2015 to 2019. Indonesia has an active and robust National Commission on Human Rights since 1993, vibrant civil society and free media. Indonesia is also a country with full-fledged democracy in function. With such a vibrant national democracy, coupled with the highest commitment to the promotion and protection of human rights at all levels, it would be nearly impossible for any human rights allegations to go unnoticed and unscrutinized. Mr. President, we reaffirm that there are domestic mechanisms in place at the national level in Indonesia, as well as at the provincial level in Papua and West Papua. For our part, Indonesia will continue to give appropriate focus to the development of Papua and West Papua provinces and to the best interest of all. In conclusion, Mr. President, we have a saying in our Asia-Pacific region, when one points the index finger to others, the thumb finger automatically point to one's own face. I thank you. Pemirsa satu pernyataan yang mengejutkan dikeluarkan oleh Perdana Menteri Kepulauan Solomon atas tuduhan pelanggaran HAM oleh pemerintah Indonesia di Papua. Namun perwakilan Indonesia justru mematahkan tuduhan dari Kepulauan Solomon tersebut dengan mempertanyakan komitmen negara itu terhadap hak asasi manusia karena hanya meratifikasi lebih sedikit resolusi dibandingkan Indonesia. Perdana Menteri Kepulauan Solomon Manase Sugafari mengeluarkan pernyataan kontroversial terkait Indonesia dalam forum debat umum di sidang Majelis Umum PBB di New York, Amerika Serikat. Suga... Greetings and ocean for peace. Solomon Islands would like to exercise its right of reply to the statement by Indonesia made on the 24th of September 2016 regarding the ongoing human rights violations of the Melanesian people in West Papua. Mr. President, Solomon Islands notes Indonesia's right of reply regarding the efforts made by the Indonesian government to establish human rights monitoring mechanisms and other avenues to ensuring that human rights violations in West Papua are addressed. We note that Indonesia ratified the Convention Against Torture in 1998, but to date it has not been able to harmonize the law to include the definition of torture, let alone to criminalize and punish torture. Furthermore, Indonesia has not submitted its period report to the Committee Against Torture since 2008. Mr. President, the Solomon Islands delegation receives reports 
from respectable sources of fellow UN member states and moral leaders from civil society, illustrating a lack of protection of human rights of Melanesian people of West Papua. In this regard, Mr. President, Solomon Islands therefore invites Indonesia to substantiate its allegations that the Solomon Islands, together with the five other Pacific Island delegations, have used false and fabric, uh, fabricated information by allowing UN special rapporteurs mandated by the UN Human Rights Council to visit West Papua and Papua. Our concern has to do with the increasing loss of lives at the hand of Indonesian authorities. We may argue and concede that mistakes are made and that lives are lost as a consequence. But Mr. President, how can we as members of this August body, the defender of human rights and the body of reference in ethical and moral values, turn a blind eye to the deaths of more than 500,000 West Papuans over the course of the last 50 years? As an island country from a region that Indonesia claims to be a part of, Solomon Islands cannot stand behind the argument of sovereignty and integrity of any country and what such atro atrocities take place. It is our moral and ethical duty as members of this August body on gathering to bring this unfortunate reality to the fore and to, together, find a way to stop the loss of lives and protect the rights of all human beings, be they be Melanesians or West Papua or any other. Furthermore, Mr. President, we come together to agree on certain rights and hold each other accountable to those rights. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 3, stipulates that everyone has the right to life, liberty and security of person. Also, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which Indonesia has ratified, is also a binding legal instrument. Article 9 of this covenant reinforces the right to liberty and security of person. Article 3 of UNDHR entails a responsibility to protect all populations from mass atrocity, crimes and human rights violations. In essence, Mr. President, we uphold the argument of sovereignty and national integrity. We, as UN members, should also hold other member states accountable to Article 3 of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights and Article 9 of the ICCPR. Mr. President, Indonesia has further clarified the many development challenges that we face as the Solomon Islands do. As is the case with the five other Pacific Island countries that were mentioned by Indonesia in its right or reply, as of today's, uh, the others, uh, including Palau, that's six. Our challenges are difficult ones and we know full well that we alone cannot and will not be able to resolve them. That is why we highlight these challenges here at this August body. In a similar vein, we highlight the human rights violations in West Papua because we realize that neither we nor Indonesia can resolve this matter alone. We are of the position that this matter needs to be brought to the attention of the body of the United Nations. And it needs to be done urgently as lives are being lost with all impunity. Mr. President, all lives matter. West Papuan lives matter. Mr. President, Solomon Island wishes to reiterate its willingness to have constructive engagements with Indonesia on the matter of West Papua. In fact, our Pacific regional and sub-regional bodies have indicated their willingness to discuss these matters with Indonesia as we are all concerned about the increasing loss of lives in West Papua. Over the last 20 odd years, our Pacific Island countries have expressed the need for dialogue with Indonesia over human rights violations. In fact, over the last 18 months, the regional and sub-regional organization of the Pacific Island countries have made three attempts to have constructive engagements with Indonesia. Mr. President, the lack of will to engage from Indonesia will not dampen the commitment of Solomon Islands together with six other Pacific Island countries to pursue dialogue and constructive engagement as they are the only means to resolving this matter. We understand that through constructive engagement and dialogue, we can realize the articles of the UN Charter and the subsequent international human rights instruments that Indonesia has ratified. In closing, Mr. President, the Solomon Islands welcomes the opportunity to highlight this case before this August body so that we, together and as a family of nations, can and must address the human rights violations and the loss of lives in West Papua. It impinges on us as members of the United Nations to cast aside all barriers so that further lives are not lost in West Papua. Mr. President, we are here to enable the divine purpose of the universe to unfold, for all life is sacred.